shares of Amazon lower in after hours trading after the company missed big on its second quarter earnings. Amazon reported an earnings per share of only 40 cents. Now, Wall Street estimated that it would be at $1.42 per share. Amazon's profit also suffered since the company is investing big in new areas like video and expansion projects. And uh, speaking of Amazon, our notable number for Thursday is $92.3 billion. And that's how much Amazon founder Jeff Bezos was worth, if only for just a few hours on Thursday, making him the richest person in the world for a few fleeting moments. Bezos briefly overtook Microsoft's Bill Gates until Amazon's stock dropped on those earnings reports. And for more on all of this, let's bring in Vida Kradonin. She's the founder and CEO of the Barrel Consulting Group. Vida, good to have you with us. Good evening, Michelle. So a lot of high expectations for the Amazon's earnings. Uh, they beat on revenue, they missed on profit. Were you surprised? Um, no, I'm not surprised, but uh, maybe I'm surprised that the stock didn't drop more. However, this is uh, the game plan since 20 years ago. The, the game plan is basically increasing market share, and they've been extremely uh, w good in executing that. So, uh, you know, going forward is Amazon price for perfection. It has been price for perfection for some time. Uh, nothing has changed. However, uh, as you know, retail sector is really go uh, doing very bad. So lots of investors are just piling money into Amazon because that's a retail. Well, well traditional retail is doing very bad, but yeah. online retail is still doing well. Yeah, traditional retail. But again, you know, you have, for example, Walmart uh, is now just half of the size of Amazon, for example. In terms of a market in cap, terms of in terms market of the valuation. Yes. Well, do you yes. not think that that's justified? Because if you look at Amazon, it's taking over so many industries. I mean, from traditional retail to tech with the home Amazon, uh, the ecosystem, now buying Whole Foods, moving into the grocery business, mm -hmm. uh, also plans that it could be moving into the pharmaceutical business, reports on CNBC saying that. You don't think that Amazon is worth that huge valuation considering its tentacles are, are everywhere and well, in everything? Absolutely, but the, the, the main driver is so-called ASW, which is Amazon services, web services, and that one has been extremely profitable and taking big market share. Also, if you look at it uh, in terms of uh, retail, Amazon has only 10% uh, ten per, uh, ten in, in the world market share. It does has 40% in the United States, so 10% is really not much. So they have a lot of ro more room to go. Right. And, and Amazon's uh, biggest challenge overseas, who would that be? Alibaba? Alibaba, of course, but uh, I think Amazon is, is a much better company in terms of... Uh, in terms of so, so you're quite confident that Amazon is going to be able to conquer these overseas markets I'm confident like China, that, making a big play for India as well? Yeah, absolutely. That's what they're doing, but I'm not, uh, you know, I would not be a buyer at this price, that's for sure. You wouldn't? I would not. I don't think I will be shorting it because whoever was shorting it, it's not, it's not looking pretty. But, but too overvalued for you to recommend investors oh, to yeah, get into Oh yeah, there are so many point. other companies, it's too late, of course. <laughs> okay, well, we did see a bit of a, of a sell-off in, in tech today. Is that mostly because uh, investors were just taking profits uh, off the table? I think there's a lot of uh, re readjustments and also uh, there has been that so-called Trump trade. So uh, Trump trade has perked up the market and now people are revisiting if he's, is he really going to be able to deliver the tax reforms. And in terms of uh, earnings, we're in week two. Um, They've been pretty impressive so far on the whole. Oh, wall. absolutely. I mean, if you, you know, everything started from a quarter two when we had this recession in earnings uh, in 2016. At that time, you know, earnings were down six, seven percent conceptually for four, four or five uh, quarters. And now we are basically having a, a positive revisions. So the market is, has a reason to be up. However, we do have a strong dollar, which is very negative, political kind of turmoil in, 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 in the Washington, and VIX is a historic low since 1993. So there is a lot of red flags, in my opinion. Okay, uh, let's break that down. Well, first, let's talk about the earnings and, and which are the biggest sectors in terms of industries that we're seeing a lot of growth in that look positive and look like they're going to continue to grow, in your opinion? Well, I think finance, financial sector is very good because interest rates have been going up, not as much as, as people anticipated. Uh, you have to watch at the balance sheet of the Fed. They might be right. releasing maybe tomorrow, maybe on, on, on September. The well, balance they, they sheet held is, rates as expected. Yes, week, absolutely. But, but if the balance sheet uh, sh starts to shrink, then there's going to be red flag for the market. 
Okay, so the financial sector, which other sectors or industries are uh, going to Energy has off? been okay. However, now we have a, the, the price of oil has dropped 20%, so that's something to be, to be, to, to be aware of. But energy uh, earnings have increased 600%, but they increased from a very low base from the first quarter of 2016. Now, you mentioned uh, the VIX, which is the volatility index, uh, the so-called uh, fear gauge of the yeah, markets. There is no fear. Everything is great. Well, what does that indicate? I mean, is that a sign that the markets are too complacent? Uh, what is the quote by Warren Buffett? Uh, be fearful when others are greedy. Be greedy when others are fearful. Something along those lines? Something along, but there are lots of things. Is it, are, are we not taking things seriously enough? Do you think investors are too complacent right now? Um, it, you know, it could be a factor of because we have lots of quant traders these days and lots of these guys who are actually writing algorithms, they, they never traded Yahoo in their lives, so maybe they don't know what they're doing. Uh, <laughs> I would not go into that extreme, but uh, the market is very confused and the, the low VIX is not being justified, so buyer be aware. But your outlook for uh, the next quarter, do you see a slight correction coming? In well, the S&P everybody, everyone, everyone has been wrong uh, with this correction thing, right? We, we don't know. Uh, but one thing I know is that the VIX is a good indicator that something might happen in the future. And also some big guys are buying puts on S&P 500 uh, five, six months, like uh, Gundlach, for example. So, so it's, uh, there, there, there is lots of discrepancy in the market marketplace. So I will be very nervous. I would definitely not be long at this at this level. Right. I will be very nimble. Uh, being short didn't work. So I would just be very nimble and, and wait for a correction, I would say. All right, stay on the sidelines. As long as, it, as, long as, it, as you have to wait for. Okay, take it easy. Wait on the sidelines. Exactly. Thank you so much. Thank you, Michelle.